Hello students, welcome back to the third part of the Vapor Power Cycle. Today we are going to discuss about the modification of Rankine Cycle such as Reheat Cycle. So here you see the layout of an Reheat Cycle. So from this diagram you can easily identify what is the basic difference between the normal Rankine cycle and this modified Rankine cycle that is reheat cycle. So here you see there is two turbine one is high pressure turbine and one is low pressure turbine instead of one here it is two turbine. So why we use here two turbine basically here we are going to fix the dryness fraction of the weight steam that is exert, exerted from the turbine up to 0 0.85. So when we have to limit the quality or the dryness fraction at the turbine of the turbine exhaust to be 0 0.85 we have to use the reheat cycle. So basic function of all other components will be same as we discussed in the Rankine cycle. But here again we discuss the same thing. So see this is the boiler, this is the high pressure turbine, low pressure turbine, condenser and this is the pump. So in boiler what we have to do? We have to supply the heat energy that is considered to be Q1 to generate the steam from the water. The steam is considered to be superheated steam and this superheated steam is fed to this high pressure turbine. So after entering the turbine, high pressure turbine, the steam has to perform some work and that work is considered to be the output of this total system. So after performing the work, the steam will be exerted from this turbine and feed to the reheater so see here it is the reheater coil so this is connected with this boiler chamber so where the steam is again heated and fit to the low pressure turbine so again as it is a turbine so this steam has to produce some work and that work is considered to be again output of the whole system so after performing work, that steam will be exerted from the turbine and feed to the condenser. So where the heat is rejected at the constant pressure and the steam becomes saturated liquid water. This, that saturated liquid water now feed to the boiler by means of this pump. So here as it is the pump, so work should be done on the pump. So here we have to supply some energy that is WP. Clear? So now we have to find out the magnitude of the heat that is added to the boiler. That is Q1. Work performed by the high pressure turbine and low pressure turbine. Heat rejected by the condenser and work done or work supplied to the pump. So from this diagram we have to draw the TS diagram or coordinate diagram. So the coordinate diagram here you can see that is 6 to 1 process it is the heat addition process. 6 to 1 it is heat addition process. Then 2 to 3 it is reheating process. 2 to 3 is the reheating process that is also considered at constant pressure. That is you can say isobaric process. Then 3 to 4 it is again for the turbine. 1 to 2 is for the turbine that is reversible adiabatic expansion process. Then 3 to 4 again it is reversible adiabatic expansion process. Then 4 to 5. 4 to 5 is the isobaric heat rejection process. That is for the condenser. So after heat rejection that steam becomes water, saturated water. So that's why this 0.5 is represented on saturated liquid water. Now this state 5 is 
feed to the boiler by means of the pump so that is 5 to 6 process so 5 to 6 process is what reversible adiabatic compression process so according to this diagram that is reheat cycle and this re the coordinate diagram of the reheat cycle we have to define the expression of q1 wt q2 q2 and wp so q1 so uh, remember the previous uh, rankin cycle the normal rankin cycle where we have the heating process is from process 4 to 1 but now here the heating process is 6 to 1 and 2 to 3 so according to that the expression becomes h1 minus h6 plus h3 minus h2 so this also we get this expression also we get from the steady flow energy equation so we here also we have to identify which energy is entering to the boiler or which energy is leaving the boiler so entering the rate of rate of energy flow entering to the boiler must be equal to the rate of energy flow from the boiler so according to that we can get the expression q1 equal to h1 minus h6 plus h3 minus h2 similarly wt is that is for turbine so see 1 to 2 is a high pressure turbine 3 to 4 is the high pressure turbine so both are the work output so h1 minus h2 for one turbine and for second turbine h3 minus h4 so combined it is h1 minus h2 plus h3 minus h4 now heat rejection this is for heat rejection q2 that is h4 minus h5 now for pump that is h6 minus h5 so if we have to consider the efficiency efficiency is equal to you can say w net by q1 so w net is what wt minus wp by q1 here is the expression of wt wp and q1 by considering this you can consider the efficiency or the performance of the reheat cycle similarly you can also calculate the steam rate of the reheat cycle so the mathematical expression is what that is steam rate is equal to 3600 by wt minus wp so according to this reheat cycle wt is what h1 minus h2 h3 plus h3 minus h4 and wp is what h6 minus h5 then heat rate heat rate is equal to 3600 by efficiency so now i think you can understood this reheat cycle. Thank you.